he calls my name. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God, fall on my knees and rise. Good morning. Welcome to class. Class time here in the classroom and in the living room or wherever you're watching class from. Glad you've joined us this morning. We're working on a topic called The Bible Doesn't Say That. And we've looked at, uh, let's see, seven so far, I think sayings that people sometimes attribute to the Bible. God will not give you more than you can handle. God helps those who help themselves. God has a plan for your life. God wants you to be happy. You got to forgive and forget. Don't judge when everything happens for a reason. All of those may sound somewhat familiar to you as either attributed to the Bible or uh, they just sound like maybe they ought to be in the Bible. Well, we've been looking at those and seeing if they were, and uh, basically all of them are not in the way that we use them sometimes. So that's what we're on. Today we're going to look at this one. Follow your heart. I hear that every once in a while. People that give that as a, a good advice to someone when they've got a hard decision in life. Well, just, just follow your heart. And that sounds almost biblical, doesn't it? Uh, it certainly is prevalent in the world. I've enjoyed each week ser searching for books and posters and t-shirts, and I always find a bunch. Uh, here's a book called Follow Your Heart and Take Action, Seven Secrets to Living the Life You Were Truly Born to Live. Now, okay, so if you want to live the life you were born to live, Follow your heart, says Mr. Hahn. Uh, you can buy posters or Hallmark cards. Follow your heart, it's always right. That's a good reason to follow your heart, because it's always right. Get a t-shirt that says, follow your heart, and you'll never go wrong. It's always right, and you never go wrong. It's sounding better all the time, isn't it? Uh, the great philosopher Steve Jobs said, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition they somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. So your heart and your intuition know what you want to be. And it's always right, and it never is wrong. So this is sounding better all the time, isn't it? Uh, here's a little twist on it. If you don't follow your heart, you might spend the rest of your life wishing you had. So, a little warning for you. You better follow your heart. And you can get tattoos that say follow your heart if you are looking for a new tattoo. Here's one take we'll uh, stop on. Follow your heart, but take your brain with you. Uh, kind of an interesting twist there. And the thing that I, I put that up for is because it implies that the brain and the heart are two different things. That you can follow your heart, but there's also a brain side of things. So which one do you follow here? Uh, and the question that we gotta start with first is, are those two separate things? Uh, is the heart and the brain two different things? Uh, where is this heart that we're supposed to follow? that's never wrong, that's always right, that if you don't follow it, you'll be sorry someday. Uh, where is this thing called the heart? And I considered not spending time on this because I think all of us just kind of know what we mean when we say follow your heart. But I thought, now nah, we better think about it just a little bit and then we'll spend just a few minutes here to start talking about what the heart is. Uh, so let's go to the Bible 
And if you get a concordance and look for heart and read through the Bible, you'll find all sorts of things attributed to our hearts. The Bible talks about thought in the heart, how someone thinks in their heart. It talks about emotions, talks about feelings, talks about conscience, your heart guiding you somehow, talks about the heart planning, making plans, talks about the heart making decisions. So uh, it's starting to sound like maybe the brain's involved somehow. Uh, it isn't strictly that the heart feels and the brain thinks. It's kind of mixed up in the Bible here. Uh, a couple other points I'll make here. It, the Bible says that God has a heart. Now we know he's not physical, he's entirely spiritual. But when he talked about David, he said, he's a man after my own heart. God's got a heart somehow, whatever that entity is that we're talking about. Uh, God looks at the heart. When he evaluates people, he doesn't just look at the outside. When he was looking for a king, he passed over all the good-looking sons of Jesse and picked the one with the good heart. Okay? So he evaluates people's hearts. Uh, Matthew 15, 19 is an interesting little passage. Uh, it says that's where evil thoughts come from. That's where bad behavior comes from, is the heart. Okay? So maybe that helps us understand a little bit more about what the Bible means when it talks about heart. Uh, here's the kind of definition that I'm going to work from today. Uh, and let's compare it to the physical heart. The physical heart is an organ. We know where it is. We know what it looks like. We know what it does. And it drives the whole body. It drives life in the body. Without the heart operating, the body doesn't operate. Okay. The spiritual heart we, we can't point to an art organ and say, okay, that's the heart that the Bible is talking about. But wherever it is and whatever it is, it's the place of emotions, it's the place of desires, and what it does is drives the will of man to behavior. Why do we hate, behave the way we do? Because our heart drives us to do that. Now, as we keep working here on this, I think that'll become a little, little clearer to us. It includes the brain. The brain's part of it somehow. And feelings are part of it somehow. And lots of other things come in there. And everybody's different in the way they operate this heart thing. Uh, some people lean a lot more towards thinking. Some people lean a lot more toward feeling. Now, the world in general today is doing a whole lot less thinking and a lot more feeling. Okay? And their heart, driven more by feelings than thinking, drives their behavior, drives their thoughts. Okay? And I think that's the way the, the Bible talks about it. So let's assume that's a good way to think about the biblical heart. And... Uh, Think about what the Bible says. If we know what the heart is, we can say with assurity that the Bible does not say, follow your heart. Okay. Now, every other thing we've looked at, the first seven, we've kind of hidden it all around and said, well, the Bible kind of says that. The Bible sort of says that. If you read it a certain way, maybe you can think the Bible says that. This one is our first clear, out-of-the-park home run. The Bible does not say, follow your heart. In fact, I can say that so confidently because the Bible says the complete opposite. The Bible does say in Proverbs 3, 4, 5, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Okay? 
That's another term for our heart, is our understanding, what we feel, think, believe we ought to do. The Bible clearly says, no, you, you trust the Lord and not your heart. You let your heart follow the Lord. It, it trusts Him, but you don't follow it. You don't follow your own understanding. So the Bible says the exact opposite of what our little saying is today. And let's look at four different reasons that it says don't follow your heart. First one, the heart's not trustworthy. Okay, uh, Jeremiah 17, 9 says it is deceitful. It's deceitful above all things. It's desperately sick. We can't understand it. And that sounds kind of harsh in some ways, but uh, that's a biblical truism. Our human understanding, thinking, feeling, all this that's wrapped up in the heart, it's not trustworthy. Deceitful. Uh, these days we operate by GPS. We want to go somewhere, we plug in the address and off you go and it'll take you right there. Almost always. <laughs> Have you ever had one that takes you the wrong place? Yeah, something about my address where I live now, uh, there's some iPhones or something that it'll take you completely a different place. And so when I've got a serviceman coming to look at something or uh, give me a quote on something, I always give them the address and then I say, now that's <laughs> straight out 254 to 159th and a half mile north. If it sends you somewhere else, you're going to the wrong place. Okay. Uh, there's something about some map and some GPS system that is not trustworthy. Okay. Well, that's what Jeremiah 17, 9 says, is the heart's not a trustworthy GPS for life. Second reason that we don't follow our heart the heart desires the wrong things. Okay? It's not only not trustworthy, it desires the wrong stuff. Okay? Romans 1.24 says that people had sinful desires of their hearts. And they reached a point where God says, okay, follow them. Go ahead. See how that works out for you. Okay? He gave them over to let their heart decide what they'd do, and the heart picks the wrong things. Galatians 5.17 calls it the flesh, which kind of describes this heart thing we've been talking about. And it says specifically that the flesh and the desires of God are always opposite. You, you trust your heart, which un is untrustworthy to start with, if you follow it, it's going to want to pick the wrong things. They're opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Okay? So heart's not only untrustworthy, it desires the wrong things. Third reason, the heart can be sincerely wrong. Okay? And that's the corollary to this one. Follow your heart. You can, you can trust your heart. Remember those slogans we looked at? It's never wrong. It's always right. It already knows. Okay. And we believe that. We feel that. And we're sincere about it. Okay. The heart can be sincerely wrong. Paul's was. Paul was writing an act, or we're talking in Acts 23 1. It says, Paul looked at the council. Now bear in mind, this is after he had pursued and arrested Christians. This is after he had had hauled them off to jail. It's after he had watched the death of Stephen and assisted in it. It's after all these things, he said, I did everything in good conscience. I was absolutely sincere that I was right. All of this heart thing, my brain, my feelings, my emotions, my training, my nurture, my, my everything, said this was the right thing to do. 
Uh, <clears throat> he was sincerely wrong. A anybody in here ever had, ever do something that your heart led you to do and you were absolutely convinced it was the right thing and today you wish you had a do-over? Yeah, we do that. Can you think of anything that you decided not to do for some reason or were prevented from doing that your heart was telling you this is the right thing to do? And you are so thankful today that you didn't pick that spouse <laughs> or something else that at that time your heart thought this is the really right thing to do. Okay, uh, both sides of that. So we get sincerely wrong sometimes. Okay, last reason, fourth one. We're not supposed to follow our heart according to the Bible. We're supposed to be led by our heart. We are to lead our heart. Better way to say it. Lead your heart, don't follow it. Now, that sounds kind of odd, but all through Proverbs, all, all through the Bible, it tells us we can train our heart. Okay? This heart, remember what it is. It's the seat of desires and emotions and thoughts that drives the will of man to behavior. Okay? If that's what the heart is, then we need to train it. Okay? Proverbs 22 says, listen to the words of the wise. Apply your heart to my instruction, for it's good to keep these sayings in your heart and always ready on your lips. Okay? The wise man said, good thoughts, good things, put them in your heart. It's good to keep them in your heart. Why? Because then you're training your heart. You're leading your heart to where it ought to be so that when it drives your will and your behavior and all that, it's something better to follow. Another verse, Proverbs chapter 3. Solomon said, My, my child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. Okay. So how are these good things going to happen? Well, the heart is what drives our will and our behavior. So Solomon says you put these commands, you put these wise things in your heart, and then you'll go the right direction. Psalm chapter 119, famous passage about the Word of God. David said, with my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. You want to do, have good thoughts, your will direct you the right way, have good behavior, train your heart lead it to the right place so it'll direct you better. Okay, last verse, or last, no, i got two more. Here's one, though. Uh, this is an interesting one. What if I said to you, uh, you can pay to have your heart trained? That'd sound weird, wouldn't it? Sound like a televangelist, you know? <laughs> you send me enough money, your heart will be good. Well, in a way, that's what the Bible says. You put your treasure somewhere, and what will happen? That's where your heart will be. Would you like to have more of a heart for young girls that need help in life? Well, give some money to Carpenter Place. And, and your heart will follow. Okay. An interesting thought. You want to train your heart, put your treasure someplace that it ought to be. Okay, here's the last one, Matthew 16. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. What's our slogan for the day say about self? Trust it. Follow it. It's never wrong. It knows what you want. 
If you don't follow it, you'll be sorry someday. Jesus said, no, you deny yourself. You lead your heart to the right place by denying yourself. Okay, here's the summary of the four things I <coughs> went through quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. Heart's not trustworthy. The heart desires wrong things. The heart can be not just wrong, but sincerely wrong. And the heart needs to be led, not followed. Okay, hopefully those are <coughs> some reasons that we don't follow our heart. Okay, let's finish with a danger. And uh, <clears throat> we've been trying to think through these on almost every saying is, okay, if we say this, if we think this, if we believe this, what's some of the main dangers? And on this one, <clears throat> if we tell ourselves that we can follow our heart, here's what I think is probably the, the biggie, is... <clears throat> We think that we have within us the ability to choose the right thing. Okay? Now, this, you got to think about this a second. Uh, it, it's not just that we want to try to follow our heart. It's not this, just that we want to try to direct ourselves. The, the real danger is that we think we can. We think, okay, I can figure this out. I can pick the right thing. And a lot of the other ones that we've talked about in this class kind of meld into this one, don't we? God wants you to be happy. Okay. Well, if I believe that, and I think that following my heart's a good thing, then I'm smart enough to figure out what makes me happy. Okay. So a lot of them tie together, but I think this is the, the root danger, if you will. Uh, not just that we want to try, but that we think it's possible. And the Bible says it's not possible. Proverbs 14, 12 says we'll get it wrong. We will mess it up. If we think we can make the right choice, and it seems right to us. It feels right to us. Man, our, my heart is telling me to do this. You know, we can, some, unless we've trained our heart properly, we can be pretty sure we're going to mess up and pick the wrong thing. Uh, not just the wrong thing, but the deadly thing. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Things that seem right to us, if we, if we follow our heart, we're going to pick some wrong things. Let me give you a couple of examples here as we close and try to make it a little more real world instead of talking this general stuff. I picked a couple of songs out. Uh, here's some of you old enough to remember Debbie Boone and You Light Up My Life. Here's some of the words of that song. You light up my life, you give me hope to carry on. You light up my days and fill my nights with song. It can't be wrong when it feels so right. Can't be wrong when it feels so right. Because you, you light up my life. Okay? Now, you might like that song or you may have never heard that song if you're too young. But it gets down to it and it hints at this fact that, okay, I've got the ability to pick out what's right. right? And it feels so right to me that it can't be wrong. Okay? Now, we could stop there and say, okay, can you imagine that this would lead you into trouble sometimes? If it feels so right that it can't be wrong. Uh, we might imagine a few, but luckily I've got, I'm old enough to remember one other song that makes it even more clear. And good old Percy Sledge said, if loving you is right, uh, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Is that a classic or what? 
If this is wrong, I don't want to be right. If being right means being without, I'd rather be wrong. And you've got to go about three verses down before he gets real world with us. But here's what's in the song. Am I wrong to fall so deeply in love with you, knowing you have a wife and two little children depending on you too? Am I wrong to hunger for the gentleness of your touch, oh, when I got someone else at home who needs me just as much? Okay. See, that second part kind of flabbergasts. We think, why would anybody say that, much less think that? Because of the first part. It feels right. Uh, my heart tells me this is the right thing. In fact, it feels so right, even if it's wrong, I don't want it to be. And that's what we do with this follow your heart thing. We rationalize ourselves, we rationalize wrong into right because we don't want to be wrong. Okay. The, the writer of the song knows, okay, this is really wrong. This is messed up. You got a family, I got a family, but man, it feels good. So I'm just going to call it right. Okay. There's a way that seems right to man. It ends death. All right, the Bible does not say, follow your heart. Unequivocally, it says the exact opposite. So train your heart, lead your heart to the right place instead of following it wherever it wants to take you. Next week, we're going to tackle one more saying that uh, well, it may be in the Bible or may not. Time's up. <laughs>